Hello and welcome back to Factorio C Block. Last time I left it with a bit of a question almost, at least in my mind, of what do I do next? Um, it's a little bit uh, overwhelming, the amount of choice we have here. And uh, as we were kind of wrapping up, or after we've wrapped up the last episode, I had to look around uh, a little bit at the base. And I realized that every time we do a tiny bit of research, all of a sudden, we have ore uh, refinement goes completely haywire. And that's just because we're just not providing enough of uh, the raw ores into this system uh, to make the things we need to make fast enough. And so that means that we need to provide much, much more mineral sludge. I mean, right now, it's um, we're not we may be using how much we're producing, but really we should be producing a lot more of some things. We should be producing a lot more uh, stearotite and sapphorite, uh, for example. I don't know what's going on over here, though. Oh, this is blocked. Uh, I was also fiddling with this, too. Um, we have too much slag slurry. Too much, too much, too much. Um, I'm sorry, too, too much slag slurry because this is producing more than what we can actually consume here. So this... this uh, this crushed rock is actually backed up on me. And I did have it um, here at one point buffered into this system here, but I think I'm going to um, put that back in because it's just it's just too much, too much stuff. Uh, you know what, actually, no, let's do this a little bit differently. Uh, let's put a box in, yes, but let's do it a little bit differently so that we can do... Uh, no, that won't work. <laughs> um... go here uh, we can buffer it into the box much faster this way um, you go down you go left well yeah your left my right and let's do this this way and we're just going to buffer that box full and that way we'll keep this stuff moving but uh, the, the real problem here is is more that we just don't have enough stuff so we need to deal with that uh, enough ore being made and so um, I, I want to do a couple things. And I spent the, you know, five days uh, since I recorded the last episode uh, trying to decide what I wanted to do. And you can see that I've paved this large area. And, of course, it's getting dark on this again because it doesn't take long for it to get dark. I paved this large area because I ha want to reorient this whole thing uh, to be vertically oriented. And the reason for that is because I want to not have these bus belts sneaking through here, but also because uh, I want to be able to change things as we go. Um, but I've also made it a lot bigger than it needs to be, and we have, I need to fill, finish filling it in yet. But the reason I made it a lot bigger than it needs to be is because I've designed a couple of blueprints that we're going to take a look at, and then I think I'm going to do a time lapse, because I just remember the name of it this time, of me putting the blueprint down and filling it in and hooking it up and getting it started because it's good because each of them require a bit of a kickstart and if i can i'm gonna also try to narrate over the time lapse a little bit i don't know how that's gonna work um but if i can i will do that and then we'll come back at the end and i'll just you know give a little bit of a wrap up for this episode i'm not sure how this is going to work out in terms of production time and release time so this this may only be this may be the only episode this week uh depending on when i can actually get it done and get it out but i wanted to i would definitely want to do that but the first thing i want to do is to actually increase the landfill production uh what i've landfilled over here was about ten thousand landfill and I, and then I, that was all i had so we need to produce a lot more. Uh, since I spread that out, uh, I have accumulated, well, here it is, 311 since I spread that out. And it's been a bit of time. So what I want to do first, first here, is I want to uh, make these washing machines <clears throat> into the tier two ones that we unlocked recently. And those are here. And the notable difference between them is they are 50% faster. So for every... Um, for every one of these that we had producing mud, or every line we had producing mud, that we actually have a calculation for here that I had open because I looked at it. Uh, each line of these, assuming they're not the stuff's not being stolen for some other reason, i.e., the brick making, uh, we're making enough mud to to operate. Since we have two lines, 1.8 assembly machines making landfill nonstop. But even then, we're producing less than a half a landfill a second, which isn't great. Um, so. We definitely want to produce more, and by just doing this one thing, we're all of a sudden going to jump that up to, 
almost 0.75 and then I may even do a little bit uh, an extra row or two of this just to get it there because there's just too much going on otherwise so let's um let's take these down because I want to upgrade the machines as they are rather than making new ones so let's take all these down it's gonna you know lose the the water and stuff but that's fine um, and then I want to take uh, all those machines and get them upgraded. Ten of them, five and ten. And I just gotta make a crap ton of bronze pipes. I suppose I could have had that prepped ahead of time. Uh, make a crap ton of bronze pipes in order to do this. Maybe we do this instead then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That way we make all of them one at a time and we can start laying these machines back out and start making some more mud again. So machine number one, uh, you can go Actually, you know what? Let's do it this way. Let's go in here and let's replace all these with machine twos. And you can see immediately it goes down to 0.67 uh, required. But um, we also can uh, increase the production then too to, uh, I guess, 0.336. Yeah, there we go. And so we need to actually have more another assembler uh, before we're done with all this too. We'll put that up too. But then I can pin this over there and then I can just click here to place these down rather than what I was doing before. And of course I have to figure out exactly how this needs to go down again, because I guess it goes mud in, water in, next thing out right there. Okay, good. And then this one goes uh, water on the bottom. There we are. And then the third one goes, oops, wrong button. Third one goes uh, water on the bottom. Fourth one goes water on the bottom. It's a single rotation and then water on the bottom. And that's five of them as soon as they get that one done. Uh, just about done. And then what I'll do is I'll just copy this and put it down there, and then that way we'll have uh, the other one as we can make them. And then we can go put up the um, other thing, uh, the other assembler up here, uh, and that way we have that also. Uh, the problem is where to put it, how to put it. I think I'm just gonna put it here for the moment um actually no i think i'm gonna put it put it here uh, and then we can do uh one of these like that and then one of them like excuse me sorry uh, this and then put another box in right there uh, so i need an assembler and we'll put that in the queue i don't have iron uh we need an assembler and a wooden box go ahead and make that let's go get some iron while we're waiting for things to get made uh, one of the things that I want to do is I want to take out this particular iron. Uh, no, not that. Undo, undo. Uh, this particular iron bit here. Because, really, I would I do not want the iron getting made from this. I want the iron getting made from the other. Uh, I want the iron getting made with this recipe, at least right now. Uh, this is clean. This is done. This is done. All this goes away. Maybe not that. Oh, that's fine. Uh, then I need a couple of these stacks of iron here. Uh, let's also do maybe a small change here to put in just a long-handed inserter instead of having that intermediary belt, and that'll take care of that while we're here. Uh, assembly machine, uh, go. And that'll take care of all of that. And if I do expand this, I can use some of the landfill uh, to expand this. Maybe add, two, add a row, another row or two, and that'll even produce more of this uh, that we need. So, um, with that, let's take a look at these blueprints here and um, go with that. So, uh, actually, I can't put them down because I don't have room to put them down. So, we'll take a look at this. Oh, uh, one other thing we need to do in the research. We need to unlock charcoal processing 2, which gets us these charcoal pellets. That's part of this plan as well. And I forgot about that. So, this plan will make uh, power. Basically, this will make power. It has a uh, surplus for extra um, charcoal that's not being used for power, but uh, it is one, two, three, four arrays like we have over here right now. I spaced them out just for reasons, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you why in a minute, but uh, it's four times the amount. It makes enough power to power uh, 20 of the Mark II uh, 
boiler uh, or st uh, steam turbine, steam engines, steam engines. And it, uh, otherwise it's like, these are basically copies of that. There's four of them. And the reason I spaced it out was so that this was evenly spaced around these. It's totally arbitrary. Uh, out from this area, instead of it making the charcoal right away, out from this area comes the wooden pellets. Uh, blocks, whatever they are, and then th those go into all of these furnaces here. There's 12 of them making the charcoal, and then there's prioritization on this, which I, I do wish you could zoom in on the uh, on the, the blueprint plan here, but there is prioritization on this so that anything that comes out of this gets prioritized down, and then once this is all backed up with the regular charcoal inside of the system, then it can go into, or actually it goes outside of the system too but uh, then it can go into making the charcoal pellets and so um, it prioritizes the making of and maybe I, I want to change that now that I'm thinking about it so it doesn't prioritize the making of the charcoal over the pellets because we do want it to make power but it it's it goes straight from water all the way to charcoal or charcoal pellets uh you need to bring in some steel along this line to make into the uh the cathodes that we looked at last time or the cathodes whatever they are we looked at last time and then you have the um uh water is an input that steel to make the things until we until we have it cashed up you need to seed it with a little bit of charcoal to get uh the the carbon dioxide being made, I think it's carbon dioxide being made here that goes into the making of this stuff. And you also have to seed some of it into here for this to, to boil the water into steam uh, for uh, processing and also the uh, make the uh, carbon here uh, for the for the things, whatever they're called. Uh, but otherwise, it's nothing, nothing we haven't seen before. It just has a dedicated uh, slag maker here in order to make the... Uh, the mineralized water that you need to keep to grow the, the algae so that's that uh just kind of a, a more clean uh tighter not perfect but a tighter packed and repeatable uh array for power and a little bit of excess fuel uh the little bit of excess fuel varies depending on how much power you're actually producing from it though uh but there is at least some excess fuel that it is uh that is going to output um, and then this other blueprint here is a more compact refinery version of the uh, making the mineralized, no, not the mineralized, the, the stuff here, uh, mineral sludge. Um, and so I've compacted this, uh, which makes um, seven and a half. And then I'm taking that into the whole process we just looked at the last time and then into making the mineral sludge right here. This will output onto this pipe. No, this pipe is excess mineralized water or I think it's mineralized water. Uh, and then the, the sludge comes out. I think it's here. Um, and then you take those pipes to your to your uh, area making the uh, the ores. So you'll have you have one of these and you'll have five of these uh, five of each of these individual things and that will be what it runs because it produces 75 plus a bit of the mineralized water i don't remember the exact number of that and so um that is kind of the thing and the, the plan would be to stamp at least two of those down over here along with you know the remaking of this a little bit um and so and then doing away with the one obviously that's over here so that's kind of the plan um like i said i don't know how much time it's actually going to take and i've already been talking about this kind of stuff for 13 minutes now so we kind of need to um to get on it but i think i might have to uh you know add some more of the landfill because it, since we've been talking we've made about 200 and 25 landfill so uh since we started this i mean so i think we need to make a little bit more so i'll focus on that first i'll make another one of those and then uh we will work on uh placing those blueprints down so with that i will uh step away and come right back so this will largely be a bit of a copy paste not a whole lot of custom editing. Uh, I'm just going to reconnect up some of these pipes, although I did miss one for the uh, sulfury stuff. Uh, I'll catch that one, I think, after while I'm working on other things. And then I'm going to move the clarifying pool down and uh, add a second one because we'll need more. And these bottom two lines can just go straight into the clarifying. We don't really need more. 
uh, before the overflow because honestly we are not using hardly a fraction of it anyways so most of it's going into the overflow I'm going to add four uh, landfill makers right here in this little section uh, it works out pretty well I think and uh, we'll take out one of the ones above This will make nearly a full belt of mud. Uh, I think it's like 6.5 or so mud. And that will mean that we will have uh, just about three and a half landfill per second, I think. No, 1.3 landfill per second, which is pretty good. It's not great, but it's, it's pretty good. All right, so there were a few things that I fixed off camera on that too, but uh, it, it does work after after the fact. So uh, just a couple of tweaks to the, to the pipes, as I mentioned, and I think one other tweak as well. So this is the uh, blueprint we talked about. Um, it, uh, it will make 75 uh, stuff that I can never remember the name of, the mineral sludge and uh, it takes quite a bit of things. And so it took me a while to get all the machines made, all the pipes, especially copper is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, still, we do need to make some tweaks to that in a coming episode, but this is nice because it's re -stampable. We can just keep placing these down as we need more and more and more. And like I mentioned earlier, it will, uh, it'll supply basically five of the crystallizers, uh, nonstop, um, based on that recipe and uh, the more we have the, the more we need crystallizing the more of these we can put down and they'll, they will draw a lot more power of course but with the other blueprint that we're going to place down later rather next time uh, that one will just give us more power so we kind of have a bit of a trade off there so we're connect this thing up so we can have power to the uh, power from the base and that'll kick up the power draw on the system, on the you know the power network a little bit. And then I realized here that I didn't make pick up nearly enough belts, and I should have just ran up to the mall and grabbed some more, but I completely didn't do it. So instead, uh, I have the bots do the placing of the belts here uh, while we work on other things. Um, we have uh, we have a bit of uh, charcoal coming in, which we'll need to precede, uh, or we need to get to get few in there in order to get the thing started. Same thing with steel here, and I'm just going to do a half a belt of steel just because steel is so slow that I do not want to store any more on a belt than I have to. And to be honest with everyone, once this is done, once this has completely saturated the belt with those um, those objects that I can't remember the name of, uh, not the steel, but the thing the steel is making, uh, then you can disconnect the steel belt and you don't have to have it sitting there uh, long term. Um, you can clean it off and, and, and make it work. But uh, for now, at least, I'm not going to do that. Uh, you also need to pre-seed, I did it earlier, uh, with about 150 of the, um, of the, the, the filter frames. So uh, make sure you make those. Uh, you can pocket craft them or handcraft them or, or set up a machine to craft them if you want. But you only need a fixed amount, uh, which is a fairly low amount, 150 compared to the amount of the other things you need. So you definitely want to, or you definitely need to make those, but uh, 150 doesn't take very long to make. And so now we have uh, most things getting made. Uh, what we're actually short on is um, sulfuric acid, which I will realize a little bit later, and then we can take care of that uh, soon after that. Uh, I'm lining these pipes up just because I'm a nerd like that, and I want them lined up together. Although I'll end up tweaking them anyway, so it doesn't really, really matter a whole lot. Because uh, that, I want to bring them together because I put them in line with the power poles, of course. 
And then we also need to figure out a way to route these pipes to the existing setup. And the existing setup is quite uh, far away. So um, it's gonna take a little bit of time. And also, again, didn't have enough pipes. And you'll see me make a few pipes a few times uh, through the rest of this, uh, the rest of this segment here. Uh, so I'm going to kind of sneak it through here, unfortunately. Uh, but as we re-lay out this, uh, this crushing, sorting, smelting area, uh, we can have a lot more, um, things going on. And a little bit of pipe spaghetti here to get around all the things. It ends up being kind of a mess, but it works out okay in the end for now. And once we uh, get through setting up all of this, then it will be um, it'll be cleaned up again. But it just yeah, it became it became a lot. Tried to sneak it through there, they didn't work, so I just ended up doing a little bit of a, a little bit of a bend here, and then it worked out that way. Uh, this one here needs it needs a bit of TLC as well to get a pipe through there. And then I came over to see what was going on, why it was backed up, or why it wasn't working, and figured out what it was, which was that missing sulfur that I mentioned earlier. So we play some pipes while we go pick up some sulfur. Uh, I just end up stealing a whole stack of sulfur from the old system, and that's plenty. And then it can, uh, it'll just vent, or rather clarify pool, any of the excess uh, sulfuric wastewater that comes out of the system, which there is a tiny bit that comes out of this uh, plan. But in the end, it works out okay also because there's, uh, uh, don't really have a use for that sulfur yet. Maybe later, if we do, uh, we can convert more of it into sulfur and take that sulfur elsewhere and use it for other things. But this makes everything work. And then we just kind of trace the pipes back to make sure they're all connected all the way through. And I think they are. And so that takes care of that. Now, at the beginning, I mentioned that we were going to do both blueprints in this episode. And then I realized what time it was, how much time I would I'd spent on this, and I decided that, you know what, we'll just uh, leave it with this one for right now. Uh, we can uh, do the other, the algae one, in the next episode. Uh, I'm probably going to end up tearing down the old build for this in the other end, and rebuilding it over here with another stamp of this, but we'll see how that goes in that uh, in the interim. And then we'll put down the algae one that makes the power, and we will come back to this in the end. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.